<laughs> hello, 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 hello. Hi, 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 hi. Hi, cat. Hello. Today, this stream, our YouTube community members. Uh, we can do. You, you can join for one dollar a month. Have boasted, boasted. <laughs> We boasted that we're going to work on something different. We're going to work on some different miniatures today. Something I've never done before. We're doing some board game miniatures. Yeah. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And we can see what they're like compared to Warhammer miniatures and other miniatures that I painted. Um, yeah, they look quite different. So, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Yeah. Well, how, how is everyone tonight? How's it going? I'm working on Pearl Street. Mm, yes. Hello. Hello, Game Sly. And hello, I only want to watch it. You can't believe something you voted for won. That's the power. The power of democracy. <laughs> That's what happens. You exercise your voice. <laughs> the pegocracy live. You can vote for something. And maybe... It will actually happen. Wow! These are from the Nemesis board game. Um, actually, uh, the expansion, the second version of it, called Nemesis Lockdown. Um, and each each Nemesis game has different different alien uh, different alien models. These ones these ones are very funky. These are very funky looking, very funky looking aliens. So there's three different sculpts, I think. No, four. We've got four different sculpts. One, two, three, four. We've got these big ones that are hanging from a post. Uh, not gonna lie, I think this one's my least favorite one. I think this, I don't know, this terrain piece is kind of, it's kind of weird. It's very big. Um, I don't know. Uh, also these ones uh, that are crouching look way smaller than these ones and it's very easy to confuse them for like a smaller alien in the game. <laughs> Play that one with some friends a little while ago it was a lot of fun. Yeah! Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I love the game. And then there's these two which look uh, fairly similar and I think this one's, these ones are cool. These ones are cool. They're very, they're very funky alien design. Yeah. So there's... There's the original Nemesis game. Then there's Nemesis Lockdown, which these are from. Um, I think there's a there's a third one now. I'm not sure what that one's called. But what's interesting is that I I don't think these have like an official color scheme or anything like that. Like they don't have box art. Like like a Warhammer miniature might have. Or like Yeah. So, I, you can kind of paint them however you want. <laughs> Let me see, can I can I share what the minis look like? Here, 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 here. So we've got, whoa, why is it, why is it on that? Hold on, don't look at that. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, go, 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 go look at that, there we go. We've got, uh, there you go. These are the ones. These are the ones from the original game. They're pretty cool. They're from the the original Nemesis Nemesis board game. Um, not gonna lie, I think I, I think I prefer the original ones. I think I prefer the original one to the to the expansion ones. But anyway, well, it's not an expansion. And the queen. Look at that. Look how cool that is. That looks like so so tyrannid, right? That looks very Tyranid. With the big brain. That's very cool. That's very cool. Um, and then these are the ones, these are the ones that I have. So this one, uh, this person's painted in blue. Um, but I've seen... Lockdown. I've seen uh, people do them in lots of different color schemes. Oh, and of course you've got, you've got the, the player characters as well. Um, and they've got a lot. A lot more detail on them, but uh, we're not we're not doing those today. I'm just I'm just doing the big old the big old alien. 
big ol' alien. Uh, that's not Nemesis Lockdown. That's the other one. God, Bing is so bad. <laughs> show me, show me the pictures. Here you go. Someone, there you go. This person. Oh, the thing with Nemesis Lockdown is that it's set, like, on Mars, which is pretty cool. So I think, um, yeah, Bright Orange is pretty cool, and it's like a mars -y color scheme. Uh, but I've also heard that they're supposed to be, like, like, bath theme? I don't know where that's coming from. Apparently they're supposed to be, like, bath theme. So I think, like, a dark color would, would, would make sense? I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, it looks like a lot of people paint the original ones, like, like black. I think, I think Nemesis is based off of a different franchise. You were just making a pitch, you didn't know that was the next picture. <laughs> good guess, good guess. Yeah, no, bright, bright orange. Um, kind of works, kind of works, because they're like Mars themed. This person's done them in like a dark orange. That's pretty cool. Oh my god. Oh no, I don't want to oh, fuck. fuck off Bing. <laughs> Trying to sell me stuff. Okay. I'm I'm done using Bing. Um <laughs> Whoa! Why is it two of me? What? Oh. What the They won't fix it. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I just duplicated for a second. Don't worry about it. It happens. Uh, <laughs> infinity, infinity bigger, infinity big. Yes. Um, I thought. Hey, there's a bug. Go away. Go away. Get off my big bug. There's a little bug. He's joining, joining his friends. No go. I don't know why it's crawling. Why is he too tired to fly? That's weird. Anyway. <laughs> I I thought it'd be cool for them to be like like dark, like a dark color, like black. Um, I also don't want to spend a ton of time on them. Because they are they're, they're very interesting. Let me show you, let me show you. The detail on them is kind of weird. Like they're very detailed, but they don't have many details, if that makes sense. Have an idea? Black and orange and blue eyes. That could be that could be an idea. Um, so they're very textured and they have lots of lots of little, little nubbly bits, but there's not really much like separation. They're just like a big a big lump of details. <laughs> Which I, I guess kinda of makes sense for like a like a weird alien thing. But it's kind of hard to tell like what what texture everything is supposed to be, right? Like, it's not, it's not very, very clear. Like, they look very organic, I guess. Um, and there's, like, no separation between, like, like, a, like, a, like a chitin and, like, a flesh or a bone, or, or is it, like, like, slime, or, um, are these supposed to be, like, like actual claws? I don't know. Um, so it's kind of, it's, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell how you're supposed to paint it, I guess. Which is very, very different to the Warhammer miniatures, like Space Marines. It's like, yes, this is armor, this is a piece of cloth, and these are ten different purity seals. Uh, <laughs> like you can't even really tell where the eyes are. Like, like do they do they have eyes? Is that? Is that's not a good thing. Maybe a different one. I, I, okay, I think they kind of they kind of have eyes. Hello, there we go. I think that's supposed to be like like eye sockets, and then they've got like a nose socket. Interesting. The anatomy of of an intruder from Nemesis. Go! Ah! Jeez! I accidentally squished the bug. Oh my god! I didn't mean to do that, but to go away, it keeps crawling. Oh my stuff. No! I put a bug! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The best part, you can paint as many eyes as you want. That's that's, that's true, I can do it. <laughs> um, so it's kind of it's interesting. Um, and I thought 
having like a very vague color scheme would be a good idea as well. Like not try to separate things um, between like, I don't know, armor and like flesh or like uh, flesh and bone and stuff. I thought it might might get a bit annoying. <laughs> also, I didn't realize before priming them, they have some big mold lines. Like, you can see that one that's running right down, down his abs, I don't know, or his chest and his abs. Um, there's mold lines uh, running along the arms. I feel like they'd be very annoying to remove though. So I think I'm, I'm we're just gonna live with it. <laughs> You live and you learn. It's alright. Um, so I was thinking I could either, we could either like slap chop something, just like cover it in you know, random contrast paints, or I could do one effect that I think would look cool with like minimal effort. Um, is doing like a glowing effect. So essentially, I prime them white. And then we could do like a purple glow or like a red glow. I think red glow would make sense because the board game has like a red cover. I don't know. <laughs> it's got like a red, red glowing cover. Um, can I show you this? Yeah, it's like red. I think it would make it would make sense to make make them like red glowy, which would be pretty easy to do. I can. I've already started with them white, and then I can. I don't know, do like a, a very thin or like contrast orange red and then dry brush slowly darker colours on it. Would that work? Do you think, do you think that would work? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if that would work, but I feel like it would be an easy effect to do that would look cool, that wouldn't require me to like try and distinguish bits. <laughs> really neat, sort of like they're being viewed through a scanner. <gasps> yeah, it could be like that. We like that. I was thinking just like, I don't know, glowing alien energy. <laughs> I don't know if these, I don't know if there's like that much lore surrounding them. I know there is like a decent amount. Um, but I, I don't know, I don't know what, what the, what the aliens are doing. I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I don't know, I don't know what they're made of. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know anything about the aliens. I think they're supposed to be kind of mysterious, right? Um, and then I could, I could like continue the theme, because we've also got the original game as well, um, that I could paint. And then I could do like the same colour scheme on them, just with like a different like glowing colour. I think the original one's like green? So I could do like a green glow. You know what, we'll test it, we'll test it on one, I'll test it on this one, on this little guy. And then we'll, we'll go, we'll go from there. I've got all of them out. I don't know if we'll we'll get through all eight. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. I don't know if I'll get through all eight of them, but um, at least at least one test model I would like to finish, so I can do the rest. Um, and then I don't know. And then we can go from there. See how many we can get done. I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna start with Magma Dross Flame, which is more orange than red. <laughs> um, but I don't have I don't have any I don't have any red contrast paint. I'm gonna I'm just it's, it's a nice it's a cool glowing color and I need more excuses to use it. It's really cool. Okay, maybe that was a bit too thick. Oh my god. Damn, that is so orange. Um, and then I'm just gonna dry brush darker and darker colors on it. You know what? If it doesn't work, then we could just go with like the orange color scheme. <laughs> That would that would also be pretty easy. Make it all awesome. Yeah. So there's there's definitely some definitely some big distinctions between these and like Warhammer miniatures. In terms of like quality as well, they look a lot rougher in the sculpt, I would say, but maybe that's like by design. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why they just they just look a bit like sloppier in a way. Like not as not as clean, not as neat. Like even the human character. You guys know what what like board game miniatures are like made of? Are they like are they like plastic? I don't know if they're plastic or isn't. I think they're. 
I think they're resin. They don't kill us. I mean, plastic is resin. <laughs> Go with my heart. <gasps> Just follow your dreams. You're right. <laughs> More of your choices? Hell yeah. <laughs> Everyone gets a voice in the pegocracy, as long as you're paying at least one dollar. <laughs> hey Sam! How do you get? Yes, yes. Trust the process. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, also, I have, I have something kind of nice as well. Um, I have, number one, a video in the works. Um, the script is done. The script is done for a bit. Um, and I was gonna start editing it this week, but I had uni stuff to do, so I haven't started editing it. But I'm hoping to edit and finish editing it next week. So, hopefully, it will finally be a new video. It's been like two months. <laughs> um, but that's just the production timeline it takes, you know. For a high quality Pega video, it takes. It takes time, <laughs> but also because one of those months was doing the 40 game 40 days challenge and the video is about the 40, game, 40 days challenge. So 40 days was spent during the challenge and then a month to do a video is not bad. <laughs> um, that's that's how long it, it kind of takes when I'm working. But you know, so. Anyway, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Howdy, just got back from seeing Dune. <gasps> wow! That's cool. I haven't seen the original Dune. I haven't seen Dune 1. Dude, I feel like people are way more, like, hype about Dune 2 than they were about Dune 1. Like, everyone, when I tell them, like, everyone's like, Oh my god, I'm going to see Dune 2. I'm like, oh, I haven't seen Dune 1. They're like, what? You haven't seen Dune 1? But, like, no one was really, like, hype about it. The original Dune movie, I don't know, I didn't really see. Like, no one was was forcing me to watch Dune like they are now. <laughs> I definitely I definitely do want to see it. I just didn't get a didn't get a chance to. <laughs> Did you get a weird popcorn by it? <gasps> Did you get popcorn? I just I just haven't been to I haven't been to the cinema in so long. It, it costs money. <laughs> Because Dune 1 was like all set up. Oh, Dune 2 is the actual movie. Oh. Okay. I see. Where can you watch Dune 1? <laughs> I kind of don't want to watch Dune 2 without seeing Dune 1. <laughs> wait, what? The Shia Lucy bucket? Is there a- wait, is there like a promotional popcorn bucket that looks really weird? No, they should make a Nemesis movie. <laughs> that would be very cool. Mm. Yeah. Last time you went to the cinema was like the Warcraft movie. There was a Warcraft movie. What? I would like to go to the cinema. I just don't have time or money. <laughs> it's that. It's that simple. It's it's weird. You don't think Dune One was that good either? But the hype real, I guess? Yeah. The hype around Dune 2 has been like way more than Dune 1. Also, I've, some, I've somehow lost my painting handle. I don't know where it's gone. Like, it's gotta be in the house somewhere. <laughs> um... But I don't think I took it anywhere. But it's gone. And I, I looked, I searched yesterday for like a good 15 minutes and I couldn't find it. <laughs> and I was, I was pulling apart my little painting station and everything, I couldn't, I couldn't find it. Uh, which makes me very sad right now because I'm covering my fingers in orange contrast paint. It's not great. <laughs> Donja bar, what? Promotional popcorn bucket looks very weird. I, I what well, I haven't seen it. What is it? <laughs> Don't care enough about any movie to go to the cinema. You just watch things on streaming or buy DVDs. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know. I I kind of don't like streaming either. I mean, I don't I don't pay for any streaming services either. Like, it's money. <laughs> and 
I, like, there has to be something really good that, uh, like, to entice me to, to, to spend money on it, I suppose. Um, or I would just wait for someone else to get the streaming service and then steal it from them. Like, <laughs> like when we went cat-sitting and dog-sitting, um, we would, like, they, they would let us use Netflix at their place, <laughs> so we just use Netflix there. Oh, I forget, like, Classy's family, they'll have, like, Netflix or something. <laughs> but the cinema's fun, I like Ages Cinema. I think Dune 2 has a good amount of hype because so much modern cinema is just complete schlock. Even if you don't like it that much, it at least has artistic vision. That's very fair. The figs will match my hair, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Dude, it's pretty close. Cool. My fingers are like way more orange. Dude, my my this orange paint makes my hair look like brown, like desaturated as hell. Like look how vibrant that orange color is. My hair looks brown in comparison. <laughs> I haven't been to cinema in so long. It's rather sad the state of cinema. Oh. I wanna go. I wanna go to cinema. Fun! To get the popcorn and the huge screen. Dude! <gasps> The last time I went to cinema was to see uh, Oppenheimer, and holy shit, that was so worth it, man. Oppenheimer was so cool, and definitely a movie that you gotta see in the, in the cinema, because it's like, it's hard to re replicate the sound of an atomic bomb <laughs> with your TV speakers, you know. <laughs> that was, oh, it was so cool. I would love, I want to see it again. That was a good movie. Mm. A lot of film in general. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of slop, a lot of slop films. Can't afford cinema, you need the money for unwise purchases of plastic I never paint. Ah! Oh, God damn it. If only I wasn't forced to buy all of this plastic. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Um. I'm just, I'm actually just saving up for something, which maybe I should tell you guys about. <laughs> My friend went to see Oppenheimer with his dad, because his dad is huge in the Manhattan Project. I had to sit all through the sex scenes. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't really expect all those, all those scenes. <laughs> all those fussy scenes. Looking at what else is on at the cinema because you miss going more often. It's all King Kong, X Godzilla, Ghostbusters, Kung Fu Panda 4. Here, take your shitty sequels. Eat up. Oh my god, yeah, they are all sequels. Though I heard that King Kong and Godzilla was actually quite fun. I I kind of I kind of do want to see it. Like I've always been interested in in Godzilla and because I love fucking giant monsters and such. <laughs> um. But I, I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about Godzilla, like, in the slightest. <laughs> so... I, I'm, I'm kind of intimidated to get into it, you know? Like, I... I don't... I don't know, do you, do you, do you have to watch, like, the original Godzilla before, like, watching the others? I don't know. I started watching... I think they had, like... I don't know, I assume it was the original Godzilla, like, on, like, a, a plane TV? I started watching it, but not gonna lie, I was like bored as hell. <laughs> um, there was no giant, there was no, there was no giant monsters in like the first like half hour when I watched it. I was very disappointed. <laughs> sure, it's a fun as a turn your brain off kind of thing, but God looks so trashy. Not at all for you. Need action, destruction, destruction, boom bang movies to really to be really good to like them. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, I think that's exactly it. It's just like a turning frame of fun. I think I would like that. I, I often turn my brain off. <laughs> they literally... Wait, what? They literally hold a gun to your head and tell you to go buy more plastic men. Yeah. God, big warhammer. <laughs> Perfect orange cat movie. Yeah! <laughs> You want to wrap up to see the new Godzilla movie early? Oh, cool! What did you think? Oppenheimer definitely had more booba than you thought. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm just waiting for the orange one for us to dry right now. So I, I kind of wanted to dry brush it, but I realized maybe that's a mistake. <laughs> I'm putting, putting very wet, watery contrast on first. This is gonna take forever to dry. <gasps> to get to the level of dryness that you need for dry brushing, which is very dry. Well, in fact, if you're pretty sure required to buy Warhammer every year to get you the, to keep the economy at play. <laughs> Damn. This looks so true. <laughs> It was fun, can't tell you what anyone's names were or any dialogue, but you had fun. That's good. I never remember anyone's names anyway, so... <laughs> Why not paint the others? Because I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the others yet. Like, I kind of want to- I want to do like a test one first. I don't know if it's going to go well or not. Um... I could- I mean, I could do that. I could just dive in and just trust. <laughs> trust that it will be good. But I don't know if I do trust or not. <laughs> Oh, the other option. Get a hairdryer. Risk of power outage. <laughs> Looks like he's been hiding in the Dorito dust. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, if you blame this army, then I guess like it doesn't even matter if you like have Dorito dust. You know, <laughs> it's the it's the perfect color scheme. If you like. Eating Doritos when you're playing the Nemesis board game. <laughs> I I called it an army. Goddamn it! It's not an army. They're just miniatures. <laughs> no. I they I guess they're like a group. I suppose. What if I just like pat it dry? Because I don't I don't really need it like in the raised areas. Because I'm gonna dry brush it. So if it comes off the raised areas by patting it dry, like it doesn't really matter. You know what? Might even enhance the effects. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm spitting. I'm spitting shit. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um. I'm, I want to dry brush it now. Why does my dry brush it now? You think it? You think I'll kill it if I dry brush it now? <laughs> hmm. Also, it would be nice to keep some of that white in the center to, like, make it look like it's actually, like, glowing. You kind of need, like, the white, like, hot center to make it look like, like an actual light source, you know? <laughs> Heinz beans monster. Yeah. Dry brush it black. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. That is what I'm gonna do. You know what? I'm just gonna trust the process. I'm gonna... I'm gonna start painting another one, because I'm getting impatient. I need something to do. <laughs> Who put an alien in my baked beans? There's an imposter in my baked beans! <laughs> an intruder. That's what they call it. They call it intruders. I think they call it intruders. Officially, in the board game. Yeah. Nemesis, Nemesis board game is very fun. Um, I've, we've played it a number of times already with, with the friendos, um, just with unpainted minis. <laughs> um, it's, it's great. You can play it as EVP or as co-op and everyone has like their own objectives they have to achieve. Um, if you're playing PvP, like the interesting thing is you can't like directly hurt each other like you can't shoot your 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 your, your human your crewmates <laughs> there is no sussiness you know um you cannot be sus <laughs> you cannot stab your crewmates but you can like interact with the world in other ways that will disadvantage them or you can like try and purposely calls chaos and spawn intruders and such. <laughs> um, and a lot of the time you will be like sort of forced to cooperate with each other. Because it's because you can't just, you know, sometimes the goal will be literally to have to escape with like player two dead, like player two needs to die. 
that's your goal. But you can't just kill player two. You have to like go around and like I don't know, shut doors, trap them in a room with a with a with a alien, or you can um, I don't know, lead them, lead them like I don't know, <laughs> use their trust against them. Um, and then I don't know, spawn an alien or something. Um, there's also like limited ways you can escape, so you can just like try and achieve your objective as quick as possible and then leave. Or the most fun part, I don't think it's ever, I don't think we've ever actually had it happen, but you can like self-destruct the whole facility. Um, and that's fun. <laughs> it's quite hard to do though. Uh, but there are, it is, it is possible, like, um, one of the goals will be to just be the last person standing. So you could just like set up your escape and then self-destruct the facility and then escape. <laughs> oh, damn, you can't believe you didn't get to see Wombat Combat 2 back at then what? What's Wombat Combat 2? Wombat Combat 1. My friend asked me how much paint her nemesis game and I was like I know dude I'd need to actually paint anything I own <laughs> hi Daz just looked up the game oh yeah it's got a lot of cards but you don't actually use all the cards like not all the cards are cards that you'll have to use in the game so um everyone like every player like every character has like their own deck of cards which is made of 10 cards and they're like really the only cards that you interact with. It is it is a pretty complicated game. Um, I would say like easier to learn than like Warhammer, I guess. <laughs> and you can like definitely have a sort of game master. All the other cards are like um, sort of like effects and stuff that happen in the game. So it will be like the intruders attack cards, or it will be like uh, just world events sort of thing. So you can just have one person managing that. Uh, and then the only cards that you have to worry about are, is your, your 10 card deck. Hi, Snaily! What kind of board game is it? It's uh, Nemesis. Um, I don't know. I don't know what kind of board game it is. <laughs> survival? Survival. Yeah, it's like a, a survival game. Um, you can play PvP or co-op. You gotta... You gotta live. That's the main objective. You have to, you have to get out of there alive. <laughs> um, that is your first requirement, um, and then everyone will have different objectives to complete as well. And getting out of, getting out of the facility alive is hard. It's, it's really interesting. I think getting out of the facility like alone is not that hard because um, lots of different ways to get out of the facility. So, at least in, in, in this version, um, Nemesis Lockdown, it's set on a Mars base. And you've got three different three different levels, like it goes deep into the ground and you've got like an elevator that goes between the three different levels. Um, and you've got different ways to escape. There's an emergency bunker outside, so you can catch like a little rover. You have to be like on the ground floor and then catch a little rover to the bunker and then you're, you're safe. Or you can go into there's like a I don't know what's called like a lockdown chamber type thing. <laughs> uh, like I don't know, you kind of put yourself in cryo stasis, I guess. That's another way to escape. Another way to escape is with a CSS pod, so you just like you just leave <laughs> in like a personal spaceship, I guess. Um. So there's a lot of different ways to escape, but they all require like different steps to go about it. The CSS pods um, are very hard to get into, but they're like quite safe. You need to wait for like a specific turn for them to open up, um, and then they have like a chance of launching. Anyway, um, but that on its own would be manageable. The hard part is escaping and completing your objective. <laughs> And the objectives as well aren't like that hard. Like just doing the objectives would also be pretty easy. It's doing both that's the hard part. <laughs> I like gladiators. Anyone played the apiary? What's apiary? Is that paint magma? Yes, this is magma Droth flame. I needed I need an excuse to use more magma Droth flame, so I'm using it. I'm using it now. 
Uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna use it as like an orange red glowing color. You knew it, yeah. It's very bright. It's very bright. You love being right. <laughs> No, you never know, Smagg. I'm sorry. I was, I was, I was, I was explaining the, I was explaining the game. Escape the hellhole. Yeah, exactly. The right. wife is painting the B ship, and I might buy the game again so you can paint your own B ship. Is that a, is that from Apiary? What is? That sounds cute. B ship. <laughs> All right, Queen B ship. Um. Yeah, so your the main layout of the game is that you've got like different rooms and you can like travel between the rooms and that's like how you how you move and you use your deck of cards to like do things. Um and there's like basic actions which you can do by just discarding the cards in your hand. Um so you're kind of giving up whatever effect that card does to like do a basic act like move or shoot. Um, so you move around the, 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 the rooms, and different rooms will do different things, um, and every time you move into a room, there's a chance of, uh, intruder spawning, because, uh, you have to make a noise roll. <laughs> so whenever you move into a room, you gotta check how noisy you are. <laughs> if you're too noisy, the aliens are gonna find you. That's the premise. They come. They come. <laughs> and there's a there's a cast of all sorts of funny characters with different abilities. My favorite character is the janitor. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. You just have a fucking janitor. <laughs> I mean, I guess you gotta have a janitor in your Mars base. There's gotta be someone that looks after it. <laughs> but everyone else is like. A hacker, a pilot, or like a captain, and then you've got a fucking Janet. <laughs> but he's actually so good. Um, because he has like a, a key that lets you open and close doors whenever you want. Um, and it's very, very easy to lock people inside <laughs> the room. <laughs> uh, great. I dropped my mad bridge off flame. No, come back. Luckily, it was closed. Down to it. A cat is a cheeky looking. <laughs> a copy of Apiary has a thing on the front cover saying it's part of the first printing and it's like the 14 south 14 thousandths and something can't be printed, which I think is pretty neat. Even though 14,000 isn't that low of a number, yeah, that's 14,000 is a lot. <laughs> yeah, Shishanto is great. Best character. I'm doing a second printing. Oh, so it was like a limited run type thing. Okay, I think this is dry enough. I think this is dry enough to start dry brushing. I right, so we'll find out. We'll find out in a bit, but it's not like leaving any marks when I like touch. So I think it'll be fine to dry brush. Hmm. Oh yeah, oh my fear. Okay, um. Should I go in like with straight black? I don't think I should go straight to black. Maybe like a dark grey first? Hmm. Can't wait to lord it over the second printing. People saying, ah, a new player, not a veteran like me. Yes. Me, I have a copy from the first printing. Bleeding. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix like a, I'm gonna mix like a, a grey colour. Got some black, sorry, some white on my palette. Happy egg day! Oh my gosh, egg day! Yay! Happy Easter! Yay! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! I'm happy having a good holiday. Mmm, having it. <laughs> an eggy day. I thought you said edgy day for a second. I was like, <laughs> an edgy Easter. Yes. Um, I didn't get any eggs today, but we'll be, we'll be getting eggs tomorrow. Um, but we did make brownies. And it's actually been a while since I've, like, baked sweet goods. 
I don't know. I I used to I used to make like muffins and stuff like that before. It's been it's been a while. It's been a while since I like baked sweet goods. We made brownie. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. That was so good. <laughs> oh. oh. And may have may have foregone lunch to just eat brownie. Brownies for lunch. Right, I'm going for the dry brushing. That's maybe a bit too too heavy. Okay. Oh, I just realized it's gonna look like like magma. Ooh, they're gonna be like magma guys, like lava, lava monsters. But you know, I guess that works. Okay, the orange is not completely dry, so I don't care. <laughs> I want I want a dry brush. So I'm dry brushing. And wherever it goes, it goes. You had dinner for breakfast? What, like dinner leftovers? Or like you woke up at dinner time? What does that mean? <laughs> I do love having leftovers for breakfast. Honestly, like one of the best breakfasts. Having dinner leftovers. Oh, yeah, we made brownies, and even before we like put them in the fridge and to let them like properly cool, we were having we were having like like a, a <laughs> hot oozy brownies for lunch. We had like half the brownies, <laughs> two two thirds of the brownies. Even we had two thirds of the brownies for lunch. <laughs> And you bet I'm having another one after stream. This is so good. Um, so today, today I've eaten brownies um, and meat for dinner. <laughs> that's it. That's, <laughs> that's all I've eaten today. I had a piece of fruit for breakfast. So there you go. Check mate. I'm actually healthy. <laughs> You woke up really late, so then you had early dinner, so I was full before seeing the movie. So dinner was the first meal of the day. Oh. Wow, that is late. <laughs> wake up at 5.30? I don't know why, you didn't give me the vibe of someone with a fucked up sleep schedule, though. <laughs> so... I don't know. I guess that's just kind of like normal on the internet though. Like no one, no one, no one sleeps at, at normal times on the internet. Like I feel weird getting normal sleep. <laughs> Alright. First layer of grey is not bad, not bad. It's gonna look a lot better once we, once we do the dark. This is quite... Quite, um, quite light, right? Hey, Brian! You woke up at 2 p.m. It's not that fucked up. <laughs> I don't know, 2 p.m. still pretty late. It's, it is a lot less messed up than, than, than 5 p.m., though, you're right. <laughs> you have trouble with getting sleep? Oh, I see. You think I'd have a normal sleep schedule if I could help it? Okay, that's, that's fair. That's alright. It's just like sometimes you you get like a vibe, you know. <laughs> I don't think you gave the vibes of the regular sleep schedule. But yeah. Honestly, I would absolutely if I didn't have a if I didn't have a job that required me to get up at seven a.m. in the morning, I would not be getting up at seven a.m. I would love to like stay up late, um, and I used to do that. I used to stream like really late. I used to go to sleep at like three a.m. Um, Cause that's like when everyone else in the world is awake. <laughs> you know, that's like the best time to stream is like really late in Australia. So I was I was like happy to do that. I was happy living like the the, the afternoon wake up game. 
Yeah, very responsible vibes. Yeah, exactly. Responsible vibe. Getting some Tim Tam. <gasps> you didn't go to bed till four this morning. See, everyone on the internet has has messed up <laughs> sleep schedules. You're the normal one. I think you're the only the only normal one. <laughs> normal. What is normal? What what even is normal? Might see if I can bring some to work when I go in on Wednesday. The Tim Tams. <gasps> Hell yeah. I haven't had Tim Tam in so long! Oh my god. Tim Tams are kind of just like overpriced. Is that controversial to say? I don't think it is. Tim Tams are so expensive, man. <laughs> when you can just get like chop chip cookie. You know? Alright, I'm going in with, with proper black now. Let's see how this goes. <gasps> God, what is this song from? I love it though. <laughs> you think it's controversial? It might be expensive, but it's so worth. I don't know. I don't know, man. There's so many good snacks out there. I feel like I need to be in a particular mood for Tim Tam. I feel like Tim Tams, you have to. I don't know. I have to be feeling like oddly patriotic, you know, to want a Tim Tam. <laughs> like we'll always bring Tim Tams with us to Italy, so then we can be like, look, look at our, look at our cool Aussie cuisine. I can show it to all my Italian family, um, and they love it. They love Tim Tams. So it's, a, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a treat. But I, I just never, I never have them. I, I don't think I've actually bought Tim Tams myself ever. It's always been like my family buys them and I'll have some, or uh, that's like it, or like someone offers me some at some event. I don't know. <laughs> like I've I've never just bought in advance for myself. You thought you were going to bed at one a.m. and then clocks went forward. Now British summertime kicked in. Oh no! <laughs> I'm so glad we don't have to deal with. With, with changing time <laughs> from Mario 64 to- Oh! It's the same song? I was wondering if it was the same song or not. <laughs> right. And they definitely re- they definitely reused it in like a, a game that I played as a kid. I used to hum this song all, all the time as a kid. That's what he's looking at. That's what he's looking like right now. It is definitely giving a lot more like lava monster than I thought. Mmm. Anzac Day is next month, so we can have Anzac cookies soon. <gasps> I've, oh my god, Anzac cookies? Usually, okay, I didn't like Anzac cookies for the longest time. Anzac cookies? Kind of mid, not gonna lie. <laughs> but, homemade Anzac cookies are like infinitely superior to like any Anzac cookie you buy at the, at the shops. Like when we actually made our own Anzac cookies, they were delicious. But normally the Anzac cookies from the from the shops just like they so dry. It's so nice when they're like freshly made and like moist though. There we go. That's what I'm looking at. It looks it looks very it looks very lava. Um But you know what? Maybe I don't know, maybe they've come from the crust of Mars or something. I don't know, deep below the crust of Mars. Volcanic aliens. <laughs> what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you think it's, a, you think it's an appropriate color scheme? I've already kind of started it on the other one, so. It's giving Anakin burning a monster fun. <laughs> they make cookies are always much better than store -bought. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I like buying one membership for $5. <gasps> oh! That's the other thing. That's what I was gonna say. I've added a new membership here. There is still a dollar fifty membership. Absolutely, you can still pay a dollar a dollar a dollar USD slash a dollar AD. What's up? Oh my god. A dollar USD, a dollar fifty AD. I think it I think it I think it is. Um but I've added I've added a new tier. 
um, the the very cool cats. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's the very cool cats. If you want to be a cool cat, you can now be a very cool cat. Um, and absolutely, you don't have to. But um, because I've got a video coming up, I wanted to add an option. Um, Oh! I gotta get the membership! Thank you! <laughs> thank you, thank you! I appreciate it, dude. Um, so, a really cool cat. So I've got a new tier that's got early access to, mem to videos. That's, 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 the, that's, the extra, that's the extra perk. Because I put a lot of, put a lot of effort into the videos. Um, and they, I think, I think a five dollar, sorry, I think a one month, like, video release schedule is doable. Wait, why did it just pop up again? <laughs> that was the five dollars, yeah! Thank you, thank you. <laughs> they were five schmackeronies. Um, and you still got all the perks from the, from the, from the one dollar membership as well. Um, absolutely you don't have to pay the five bucks, five, five bucks if you don't want to. Um, it's just if you, if you feel like giving any extra, um, very much appreciate it. Um, and it's still cheaper than a Twitch sub, so... <laughs> Though to be fair, a Twitch sub also gets rid of ads, you don't get rid of, you can't get rid of ads with YouTube memberships. Which is a shame, absolutely I would put like, get rid of ads if, uh, <laughs> if there was an option to do that. Hell yeah, yeah! Take my money? Happily. I'll take your money. <laughs> Give Pego enough money. Oh yeah, dude! Um, I'm excited to finish it and get that moolah. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. Um, I can tell you what, 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 what the plan is. Um, which might affect YouTube things as well. I'm going to be, hopefully, applying for an internship next year, um, with uni. They've got a, they've got a thing, um, they've got like a, a, a partnership with this company. So they give out, um, internships to graduates, um, and I'm gonna graduate, uh, next year. As in, no, I'm gonna graduate at the end of this year, and I'm I'm gonna apply I'm gonna apply for one of the internships, and I think the chance of getting it is very high because it's an internship. It's not just any internship. It's an internship in Germany, um, and it's a full year. Um, there's options for six months or a full year. I, I want to do the full year one though. And there's not a lot of students that want to make that commitment <laughs> of spending a year in Germany. And, um, yeah. It's full-time paid internship in Germany. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to try to do it. And also, the other reason I think I've got a high chance of getting it is one of my group mates one of the one of the the other students that I've been working with for the for the past couple years we've been in the same groups together because we're always in the same classes we're doing the same degree um we always just make groups together because we know each other <laughs> uh one of the guys that I've been in groups with um is doing it right now so if we've been in the same groups and doing the same projects and I assume we'll have similar grades um I think the chances are high that I'll also be able to get into it. Yeah. The German people live. Yeah. I have to learn some German. Yeah. <laughs> um, the internship itself is in English. Uh, so I don't have to learn German for that, but just for like daily living, absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna have to learn at least a bit of German. A possible amount of German. <laughs> um, the thing is though, they recommend to save uh, five to ten thousand dollars beforehand to you know get there and settle in um, before you start the job. So that's my goal. <laughs> um, 
and I guess it doesn't it doesn't really relate to like YouTube or anything, but I just um, I want more money. That's it. <laughs> so I'm giving you the option to give me more money for my own personal uh, reasons. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I do. I do have a plan to, to save enough money as well. Like I'm not. I'm. I'm not begging you guys for for money. Um, I I could like earn it anyway. But um, yeah, anything else? And I don't know what I'm gonna do in terms of like YouTube and streaming if I do get it and live in Germany for a year. Um, it's gonna have to be like laptop streams for a year or something <laughs> and I don't know how many minis and stuff I'm gonna bring with me mm. yeah um I was thinking potentially just doing like more normal streams for a year <laughs> like gaming and stuff because that's easy to stream it's a lot easier to stream than than having like a whole a whole mini painting set up uh, which is gonna be hard to do. I'm probably gonna be in like some share house with a bunch of students, so <laughs> I'm definitely not gonna have the space for like a whole ass painting setup. Maybe, maybe the Porter Pegger. Maybe we can get a Porter Pegger setup going. <laughs> um, or the worst option take a break for a year, not stream for a year. I don't want to do that thing. I don't want to leave you guys. That'd be so sad. Hold on. I'm gonna get this before I inevitably spill the whole pot. Yeah. Lived in Austria for years. Oh. I also lived in Austria for uh, 15 years. Sorry, I mean Australia. Same thing. <laughs> new country, new army. Ooh. That could be a fun challenge, though I don't think it's going to take me a whole year to paint an army. Go and look at the castles? <gasps> castle? Castle watching stream? I don't know. <laughs> I tried to get rid of this cat, but it keeps coming back! Yeah. I could, like, take a year off and, like, even if, even if I took a year off, I would spend it, like, working on videos or like assets for live streaming and things like I would I would use the time to, to improve my content in, in some sort of way um, and I'm definitely coming back to Australia after the internship I don't think I don't think I want to live in Germany <laughs> after after the internship hmm I think we could I think I would like to, I'd like to work on some sort of mobile setup and maybe just do like normal streams, <laughs> like non minute painting streams for a year or something. Become like a real Twitch streamer, you know? And I think it'd be kind of easy, easier to focus on things. Cause right now I got a lot of shit going on, you know? I got uni, I got work, um, and I got, I got you guys, and I got uni, and I, got, I also got a club to look after. Um, which I didn't talk about much, but that is, that is something that takes up a lot of my time as well. Um, but if I go to Germany, it's like a life reset, you know? And I'm gonna be like, just working at the internship and that's it. That's the only thing I have to worry about. <laughs> I'm gonna have so much more time like outside of that to, I don't know, work on stuff that I actually want to do. Finally paying the European Warhammer prices. Yeah! Oh my god, I could get cheap Warhammer. The problem is like taking it back. Like I don't wanna <laughs> I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna go to Germany with a suitcase, come back with like a shipping container full of Warhammer. <laughs> that might be a bit problematic. Uh, I definitely wanna go like traveling. I'm definitely gonna use the opportunity to go traveling. Go to get a Warhammer World? That'd be sick. Maybe I'll get to... <gasps> Maybe I could just work on like a Golden Demon entry for the whole year. A year-long Golden Demon entry miniature. Then I would only have to bring one miniature with me. I could turn it into a year-long series. I don't know. <laughs> work on my Golden Demon. And then go to Golden Demon. 
That could be fun. Oh. Anyway, that's what I'm saving up for. That's what I'm saving up for. Um, ex any any extra money, I would love to maybe try and pay an editor at some point, even to just do like basic editing, because I, like, I, <laughs> I feel bad. I feel bad every day I wake up and I'm not able to work on videos. I've got so many other things to work on. Um, and it sucks that I can, that like, a month to make a video is like, a quit. <laughs> it's not very long. It's like the shortest amount of time it would take for me to make a video is one month. <laughs> and everyone else out here putting videos out like every week, I'm like, what? I can't compete. What am I supposed to do? I would love, I would love to, to pay, pay an editor. At least get like the bulk of the work done and I can just do the fun stuff. <laughs> The fun, quick stuff at the end. Like 90, like 80% of the editing is just chopping up clips and putting them in the right order. And that takes so long. Um, and it's very boring. But then the last 20% is like the fun stuff where you get to add all the funny effects and things. <laughs> and actually make it like an entertaining video to watch. Oh, and I like doing that part. Anyway. Anyway, I'm hoping new video next week. That's the plan. That is the plan. We'll see if uh, things follow that plan. But, yeah. <laughs> Rowling! Anyway. What have you guys been painting? You guys been painting anything cool? Has anyone else painted any board game miniatures before? It's kind of like uncommon for me to see like painted board game miniatures. Like I, I've never played a game with a board game with painted miniatures. It's... I don't know. I don't know why. I think they they are just kind of like lower quality than Warhammer Ventures and stuff. Painted Arturus? <gasps> cool. Got too many Warhammies to bother painting board game minis? Yeah, that too. <laughs> too many Warhammy miniatures. Gosh darn it. Alright, I've orangified the second one. Yeah. I had an idea. That might make it look a bit more glowy. If I could add like a watered down, like yellow color. Hmm. Been too sad to paint for the last week. Aww. I hope it's not painting that that's made you sad. I hope, I hope painting makes you happy. <laughs> From the Dark Souls board game Dark Fruit expansion. <gasps> Paint it for a friend. The, the Dark Souls board game looks cool. I want the minis, but I heard the game itself is not great. <laughs> thought about painting Twilight Imperium minis once, but eh, they're not the greatest. Yeah, they're fine in solid colors. Yeah. Not painting that made you sad. Well, that's good. Cool. Yeah, cool. Alright. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do... I'm gonna try to do like a very watered down yellow oh my god this yellow is so messed up i don't know why i still have it it's literally rock hard <laughs> and there's just like some water in it but i guess it there you go kind of works as wash i don't know how well it's gonna like actually stay there we go oh no the orange hasn't dried yet <laughs> Let's see, let's see if the yellow will actually stay there, because that's like mostly water. <laughs> um, I don't know how much pigment is actually being covered, being being carried by this. By this water. <laughs> I 
Alright, now. It's just like water with like specks of specks of yellow in it. <laughs> Fairly yellow. Ah, it's not fully dry, girl. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Another is I've been paying typhus, but he's pretty messy. Just getting basically yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Isn't typhus supposed to be messy? <laughs> he's a he's a death guy. <laughs> Doesn't matter if he's messy. Why is it going green? So is it just me? Is it just me? Focus. Focus, please. Is it just me or does it look kind of green? I, I don't know. But it does look cool. It does look cool with the bright yellow in the in the crack. Hmm. It's just me? Okay. I mean, in the getting bronze onto bits that aren't supposed to be bronze. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Messy, not on purpose. <laughs> Pretty, this is a really easy color scheme, man. I don't think it would work as well on the on actual Warhammer miniatures, though, because they've got so many. This is the thing about Warhammer miniatures; they've got so many details on them, like all the the trim and like random security seals or helmets and weapons and armor and so many different like colors that you have to paint. You can't just- it's very hard to get a Warhammer miniature that you can just kind of slap a bunch of paint onto. And, and call it a day. You know? It's very different in that- in that sense, with these miniatures. They have, like, no variation in, like, details. <laughs> it's all just one amorphous blob. Put the light in 40k minis. Oh yeah. I should bring the mini showcase back. Oh my god. I forgot about it during the 40k 40 days challenge. You should show off some minis. Chat, have you got any minis you want to show off? You should chuck them in the Discord and maybe we'll show them off at the end of the stream. Yeah, show us what you've been working on this week. I wonder if I put some yellow on this guy as well, and hopefully it won't like affect the black too much. We'll see. And hopefully it doesn't cover up like all of the orange. <laughs> oh god, it kind of covers up all of the orange. <laughs> it also kind of discolors the black. Perhaps this was a bad idea. <laughs> I'll I'll do it. I'll have to do it. I'll do it selectively. I could just dry brush the black. I can. There we It's... I don't know if it's slaying or not. <laughs> you can see green? Oh my god, see it's, it's not just me, it's not just me that sees some green in it. I, I don't know what it is, I don't know why it looks lightly green. Maybe it's just the shade of paint. Maybe it's just this paint that has like a hint of green in it. Oh, what am I using? Ethereal yellow. Layer paint. PW layer paint. Hmm. It's been fun doing doing other other things on on Twitch as well. Gato phone was very fun. We did that Friday night. Um, I have like a number of craft projects I would like to do on the stream. 
Uh, it's been fun doing different things. This kind of got me wondering what would happen if I made like different craft related videos on YouTube. I feel like that's a lot, a lot harder to do. Um, because on YouTube you kind of, kind of have to stick to your niche, I guess. But it's a lot easier to just hop into different categories. Come the new five minute grabs. <laughs> Absolutely not, oh my god. Okay, I think it might have become a little bit too yellow. We'll see what it's like when it dries. We'll see what happens when it dries. But what the heck? The yellow has disappeared on this one. It's just turned into orange. Probably because I didn't wait for it to dry fully. <laughs> it's just it's just mixed with the paint that was already on it. Oh well, it's kind of cool. It's got a little bit of like variation in like shades of orange, I guess. God damn, contrast paint takes too long. Contrast paint takes too long to dry. I'm putting my foot down. Make it dry quicker, James Workshop. If that's your real name. Make it dry fast. <laughs> Why does it have to be so wet? Hmm? Make it, make it less wet. <laughs> it's not his real name? I knew it. I knew it all along. This James Workshop is a little, a little suspicious. Too convenient of a name. <laughs> You're James? James Workshop? Huh. I think I'm just gonna have to like cover them all in orange this stream. <laughs> Your name is Will Smith? What? Will Smith is the owner of Warhammer PM and the Lord of the Rings game? What else does James Workshop do? <laughs> That's it. Does Games Workshop do anything else? Apart from Warhammer? And Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Damn. That's kind of funny. They they found they found their thing and they just stuck with that thing. They're like Wizards of the Coast. At least they have like D and D and Magic the Gathering and Do they have anything else? I'm sure they have other things. Pokemon, that's it. It's Pokemon. They got different- they got different things. Dude. What happens when the British economy is no longer supported by Warhammer? I wonder if they'll ever branch out to try and do anything else. I suppose Warhammer is already a pretty intense task. Making Warhammer is probably harder than some pieces of cardboard. <laughs> they published a successful magazine. Mm -hmm. Which in 2024 is pretty incredible. Wait, what? White Dwarf? That's Warhammer related. <laughs> video games? With, uh, games Workshop doesn't like make the video game. They just like give their IP to other people. And they make the video game. And you got the law people, they they just they're just sipping off that James Workshop IP. <laughs> oh there's Neil. How's it going? I haven't seen you in a while. How you mean? It's kind of incredible like how 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 much goes on around Warhammer. <laughs> you got lore people, you got mini painting people, you got you got so many people like making their whole livelihood around this game. Oh um, and I'm guilty of that. <laughs> kind of fucked up. Well actually my livelihood is more about cleaning. <laughs> that's what that's what makes me money. But I do so much of my life revolves around Warhammer. <laughs> kind of weird. It's kind of wild that Games Workshop hasn't paid me yet. 
considering how much I've done for the game, you know. <laughs> Single-handedly expanding the Warhammer market in Australia. All thanks to me. Mm -hmm. Lots of stuff to do, being outside the home. <gasps> outside? But where there's grass? That's scary. That's scary, man. <laughs> Been painting the Nemesis figures a while back. Oh, sick! How'd you paint them? Were you painting these ones or the original one? I was contemplating on the color scheme. This one's pretty easy. This is a pretty easy color scheme. I bet even Classy could do this color scheme. Lockdown. Hey, the same one. Yeah. I think Lockdown is better than the original game. Um, I think they're definitely balanced a bit better. <laughs> My VDND is the same. Tons of people make money off the IP in indirect ways. That's true, that's true. And magic, god. The people that invest in Magic the Gathering. Like as a stock. <laughs> Investing in Magic the Gathering, god. Wild. And like, card traders? Dude, I didn't even know it was like such a, a real profession. Like, I knew it was like, I don't know, like a hobby for people to like buy and sell cards. I used to do that when I was, when I was into Magic. Um... I would go and play like draft or something at my LGS and then I would sell the rares and stuff I got that I didn't plan on playing with and I would use that to go back and play more magic. <laughs> but dude, I didn't know that like card trading was like it, like an actual business. Like there's a guy that's running like a million dollar card selling empire in his basement. <laughs> And he has like actual like manufacturers and stuff send him product so he can sell it on his website. I guess he's just like a shop at that point, like a, a magic retailer. Oh no, it was Pokemon, it was Pokemon. Yeah. Pretty messy, but I think uh, you tried the Uhu Gooby blood effect on them. Ah, and a bit of OSL with the uh, barrels with Guru spilling out. Yeah, I think OSL would look pretty cool on them. Um, they are very messy though. I do agree. <laughs> they've just got they've just got stuff going on everywhere. That doesn't really make sense. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But that's why just painting them as one 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 big lava blob, I guess, is kind of what it's become. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd do like an orange glowing effect. I, it turns out it's just lava. <laughs> Eve friends mostly most of my cards, all the rest to a store for credits so I could buy it from the Warhammer. Yeah! I've done that as well. Like uh, any uh, old magic stockpiles we find, we'll, we'll go sell them to our LGS and install in, in return for credit and then we get Warhammer instead. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, kind of good. Uh, and a little bit bad. That Warhammer like doesn't have like a second hand market like that. It's uh, interesting I guess is the word. Like magic, so much about like the price of magic cards like depends on the the second hand market, and then you that's when you get all these like crazy magic card investors that like drive up the price of cards, and then you've got issues with like ah oh, they're they're not gonna they're not reprinting the cards enough and they're worth too much money now and they cost too much money, and then you got the people that just want to play the game, and you got the people that want to. Use it like Pokemon cards, where you, no one actually plays the game, <laughs> and they're just worth a lot of money. Which is an investment. Uh, so it's good that Warhammer doesn't have that. It doesn't have that conflict between the people selling rare miniatures or whatever, and the people that want to play the game. Uh, but it's also kind of sad. I wish my miniatures were worth money. <laughs> They had a figure and were like, 
you know, let's wrinkle the entire thing. Literally, yeah. They, it's just it's just all wrinkles. <laughs> For no reason. Or am I not increasing in value is the main reason I can afford it at all. Well, not increasing in value in the secondhand market. Certainly increasing in value new in boxes in the store. <laughs> they do be driving up those prices. Oh my god, the neighbor's alarm is going off again. Did it not get fixed? That one time it was going off all night? What the fuck? Oh, you buy a lot of secondhand stuff. Right, that's fair. That's cool. I would love to buy more heck secondhand stuff, but you kind of gotta like wait and like stalk the secondhand market or like the thing that you want and then you just like have to happen to have the disposable income when you when you find it <laughs> like man i saw an awesome it was like a big tower army it was like a thousand dollars or something but it was so many miniatures like it was it was a really good deal but like I, you don't just have a thousand dollars casually sitting around <laughs> you know Even like a couple hundred bucks, like sometimes I'll see like a kit or something, a couple kits. It's like, I don't, I can't just drop a couple hundred bucks right now, no. I think Facebook Marketplace has replaced mindless doom scrolling. <gasps> I know! Same! But more for furniture stuff. <laughs> I don't know why. It's really fun to just look at furniture that people are selling. I like furniture. <laughs> but I guess, um... Because I'm into design. And... I don't know, I like the idea. I would like to try doing like some upcycling at some point. But that looks like fun. I want to do like DIY stuff. And that's maybe like a type of content I would like to do in the future. Doing like DIY stuff. Not like cringe DIY stuff. Not like five minute craft type of DIY. Like actually cool projects. <laughs> and make pretty furniture. Home decor. I don't know, that's very different from Warhammer. <laughs> Secretly holding 20 chairs. <laughs> no, not, not that kind of hoarding. I wish I had the space to hoard furniture. I wish I had a garage. I wish I had a shed or something where I could pick up like old furniture and then have the space to like upcycle it. You know? I would do I would like. I do it for fun, like not even, and like sell the furniture, you know, like a side hustle. <laughs> Being an orc, <laughs> maybe. Have you done the characters already, or are you starting with monsters? No, this is this is the first the first minis I'm painting for the game. This is the first board game minis I'm ever ever painting. Okay, right. cool. Hmm. The characters look like intimidating. Because they have some very small, not very well defined detail on them. <laughs> Check out the Fulu Devil May Die. It has pretty nice minis for a board game. Oh! Okay. Is there anyone that like buys board games like just for the quality of the miniatures? Yeah, I have um I have a number of like craft and DIY projects I'd like to I'd like to like do on stream or something. Maybe I'll do them on, on Twitch. It would be cool to I don't know, maybe someday make videos. I don't know if I could do Warhammer for the rest of my life. I don't know if I could stay just doing Warhammer on YouTube, you know? As much as I love Warhammer, I think I've got a bit too much Warhammer in my life, <laughs> you know? You've seen them. 
Pretty fun dungeon crawler. Ah, I started your miniature painting with board games. Oh! Basically painted everything I had then when I ran out of everything. You bought Warhammer! Ah, and boy, what a money sink has become! <laughs> you know, I, I like considered that. Um, when we first got into Warhammer, we did have a board game that had miniatures in it. And I was like, you know, it might be a good idea to like practice on these board game miniatures or something. Uh, but then we just ended up buying Warhammer anyway <laughs> and just painted them instead. <laughs> and we never painted the board game miniatures. That never, that never became a thing. <laughs> yeah. Alright, man, I really wish I had a painting handle. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so, orange. You know what? I, I don't think we're gonna get to do any more dry brushing this stream. I'm just gonna use my dry brush to slap on even more orange. Even faster. Double the rate of oranging. <laughs> Board game images are way low quality when it comes to sculpt. Yeah, yeah. That's. Definitely, I've, I've definitely noticed that before I even started painting them. Even the better ones are not, uh, are non-comparable to Warhammer. Yeah, yeah. I do think, like, it's it's very hard to beat Warhammer miniatures. Like, even in, even in other, like, war games. Like, I don't know, Star Wars Legion, I've painted Star Wars, I've painted Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, what else have I painted? Um, there's Marvel Zombicide. <laughs> None of these minis look as good as Warhammer minis. Though I haven't played, like, I don't know, I haven't seen, like, Song of Fire and Ice or, like, I don't know, what's the other, like, fantasy war game? I don't know, maybe those ones are better. Everyone's. I can think of being at the same level as Warhammer Infinity. They're pretty slick models. Nah, I've done Infinity as well. They're metal! They're metal! <laughs> we did an Infinity stream. I don't I don't think they I haven't tried Battletech either, but I've seen I've seen them in the boxes. I don't think they did. They don't look like they be much better. Oh, look at the look at the level of oranging. It is picking up a bit of the black that was on the dry brush before. So it's a slightly dark orange, but you know it's fine. It's lava. It's lots of different shades of orange. It's fine. I think a lot of companies are making similar quality models now. But they also sell older models at a lot lower quality, which brings the overall impression down. Oh, really? Like Conquest. Hmm. I was curious about how it is to paint gun plaster. Yeah. That would be interesting. I, dude, I really need to do a gun plaster. Absolutely need to try Gundam. You know what? Maybe that could be the stepping stone. That could be my stepping stone from Warhammer to other, other content. <laughs> When I first started the channel, like, I actually had the idea of, like, doing other stuff as well, but I just kind of, like, do a lot of what <laughs> You know? <laughs> like, um, Lego as well. I suppose it's not as much content to make around Lego, you know? Um... But I thought it'd be fun. I thought it'd be fun to do... Uh, I've talked about it before, I did a Gundam stream, but my first ever Gundam is like the gigantic like $200 giant box one. <laughs> that was like, like Unicorn Gundam, that's what it was called. I don't know anything about Gundam. I don't know about like the different grades and stuff. I don't know what a Unicorn Gundam is, but it's very big and very expensive. So I thought it would make a good thumbnail. <laughs> that's it. My YouTube. The YouTube brain rot. I'm like, ooh, this sounds like a terrible idea, starting with, like, the biggest, probably hardest hit for a YouTube video. I think it's, I think it's got problems. <laughs> Gunplay's a lot of fun. Some of the stuff Bandai are doing with their plastics as well. Ooh, really? Some pretty big LEGO YouTubers, they usually end up kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen, I have watched a couple videos of, like, 
Uh, this one guy that's like illegal Lego techniques. Like, like really clickbaity Lego videos, but they're not that great. <laughs> oh, there's this one guy who's I think he only does like shorts and like TikToks. Who's like a professional Lego builder and just talks about like professional Lego stuff and it's like well. Um, like one of the tests he had to do to become a, a professional Lego builder was to build a Lego sphere. Which I think would be pretty easy because I made, because I played Minecraft. <laughs> I know how to make a blocky sphere. I know how to make a sphere out of blocks. So I think I can do it. <laughs> Stuff that always blows my mind when people are building the cheap collectible minis and they basically repaint them to higher quality. Wait, what? Are you even supposed to do shading on a bigger scale? I think the entire reason for doing the highlights and minis is because they're so small the sun does not properly reflect them on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the reason you do like shading on miniatures is because like people are always like when they're first starting it's like oh why do I need a shader? Like it's, like, it's already got shadows on it from the light but it's like uh, if you were to like scale it up and make it like a real size miniature those shadows would be a lot deeper and a lot darker. So if you want it to represent, if you want it to look more like it's a normal sized dude that's been shrunk down, you know? like it's a small scene, you gotta like do the shading to make it look like those recesses are deeper and darker than they actually are. Um, yeah, I have no idea, like I, I, I don't think I can bring myself to paint board game images to that level. <laughs> They're just, I just the, the quality. They're just, they're just kind of messy, you know. And I guess coming from Warhammer makes it hard because there's like, there's a very, there's like some sort of specific set of techniques that you use to, like, paint Warhammer miniatures that isn't like super and like the good old good old games workshop classic heavy metal style i feel like would be very hard to do on book images like these <laughs> um i think airbrushing would be very powerful on on these types of miniatures mini cheese <laughs> board game minis illegal lego technique Building a working loot what? Looty <laughs> out of Lego. What's that? Building a wor working nuke <laughs> out of Lego. <laughs> Illegal legal tech <laughs> Illegal Lego legal, legal? Illegal Lego Illegal Lego technique. <laughs> Illegal Lego technique. Building a gun out of Lego that functions. Going into a bank and robbing some money. Out of Lego. <laughs> Illegal Lego technique. That's funny. I wonder if, like, anyone's actually tried to, like, return Lego pieces for them. Like, breaking. They, like, never break. <laughs> Until they're, like, years old, and then there's no chance you're getting returned. League of Lego. <laughs> Not the League of Lego. That should totally be, dude. League of Legends should totally go Fortnite. Magic the Gathering full IP smush. <laughs> Give them Lego skins. Give me Lego skins in League of Legends. <laughs> Monkey music. Is this the same song again that I was... That's the N64 one that I like that... No, this is a different one. This... This has got to be a Switch one. From... It was like Nintendo Land or whatever. On the Switch. It's got a specific, like, clickiness to it. I don't know what it is, but the... Music from Nintendo Land has like a has a bleep yeah two bleepy bloop yeah it's got a bleepy bloopy sound to it. That's very Nintendo Land. 
You think they have Lego in Fortnite now? Oh no, there's a whole Lego Fortnite game. Like it's a separate game called Lego Fortnite. Or maybe there's just a skin line that's very elaborate. I don't know. I think it's this whole separate game though. Like they've got like different physics and stuff. Like everything is made out of Lego. Not just like a skin. Which is very strange. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I don't know. I think it works in. I think it works in Fortnite. I am not a fan of it in Magic. The IP smush. Because <laughs> Magic actually had like existing lore that was cool and characters that were cool and like a very specific vibe to every set. Um, like it used to take itself seriously, you know. Magic used to take itself seriously, but now they don't anymore. <laughs> Like, the, the- you had, like, the unsets, and they were the only sets that, like, they didn't take seriously. Because that was the whole point. It was, like, the silly set, you know, and people were, like, really hyped for that. Now even the unsets are so, like, underwhelming. It's, like, just everything in Magic is silly now. Anyway, sorry, I'm- I'm going on my Magic the Gathering Broomer Ranch. God, all these kids and the Magic the Gatherings these days. I remember when they had cool lore and settings. I'm, I'm stepping off my soapbox. <laughs> it's a whole game, yeah. Yeah, it's more like an, uh, a creative thing than a shooter. Isn't that like Fortnite in general? Like, Fortnite is a lot, a lot, a lot more about the building now than the shooting. <laughs> Like, Fortnite is a, is a whole thing. Oh, and I was gonna say, like, I think it works in Fortnite because Fortnite never took itself seriously. <laughs> Fortnite has always been, like, silly cartoon-style sh kids shooter game. You know? I think the IP smush works. <laughs> I don't think it works in Magic. That's pers personally, I just like, I just like the new direction with Magic the Gathering. That's why I'm not playing Magic together anymore. At least not frequently. <laughs> not spending money on it. Yippee! Like, imagine if Warhammer just started. Like, imagine if you started seeing, like, fucking, like, Star Wars miniatures or, like. <laughs> You see, like, fucking Transformers on a Warhammer battlefield. That would be weird, wouldn't it? That would be weird. <laughs> been a big turn off for me when I've been thinking of getting into a card game. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still, like, insanely popular. I'm sure it's being good for, for profits. <laughs> I'm sure it's working for them. But I just... Miss the old magic. It was a, a different game. I think there's room for both. Okay. Maybe someone should come and make a serious card game again. Remember loving Roma Six Siege? It was pretty immersive as a tactical competitive shooter. The operators had pretty realistic cosmetic, but they ruined it when they went off the deep end. Oh really? I haven't heard like anything about Rainbow Six Siege for a long time. I remember it was like a late high school it was like popular. I don't know, and I haven't heard about it since. <laughs> the added shit like Pickle Rick and Master Chief? Oh no. Was this before or after Fortnite did it? <laughs> Talk about someone at the Warhammer store about every time I look at MTG, they have a new crossover. And then when I got home, I checked Instagram and got an ad for Assassin's Creed MTG. Oh my god. But no, literally, the same thing. Every time I go into the store, there's a different, a different war, a different magic crossover. It's like. <laughs> And you just like can't keep up with all the different sets and stuff that they're doing. A 
can't keep up. My little my little boomer magic brain can't keep up with all the new fandangled magic cards coming out these days. You know what? Maybe I'm gonna start gatekeeping this. <laughs> Gameplay is still the same. What do you mean? For Rainbow Six? Or magic? The gameplay magic has also changed a lot. But, um... What was I saying? Oh, I was gonna give a really boomer take. And this is like, I, I understand this is a really shit take. Um, but it is a take. <laughs> I don't expect everyone to agree with me. But... It's kind of good and bad at the same time as well. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know, I guess it makes me sad because they're turning like this niche, nerdy thing that was Magic the Gathering that, like, I don't know, people would make fun of you for playing Magic the Gathering in school and they're turning it into like a pop culture thing now. And now Magic the Gathering's cool! I like Magic the Gathering before it was cool, that's it, that's my thing. <laughs> I like it before school. You guys made fun of me for like magic gathering. Now you guys like it? What the hell? <laughs> that's it. That's my that's my argument, Senator. <laughs> but at the same time, it's good as well because it's a gateway. <laughs> it's a gateway for more nerds. They come into Magic the Gathering thinking it's this fun pop culture thing now. You've got like fucking rappers playing Magic Gathering now, you know? This is like Pokemon, like, when the, uh, like, fucking Logan Paul and stuff started playing Pokemon, it became like a, like a cool thing, like, oh my god, cool people collect Pokemon cards now. Oh. There's cool people that play Magic now, and it's a... Maybe it's a gateway. Maybe it's a gateway to becoming a nerd, and you know what? I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm happy with that that aspect. And you know, what? maybe more people will go down the Magic the Gathering to Warhammer pipeline. <laughs> oh, Rainbow Six. I see. I see. Is that a cable? Oh, that's a cable. Okay, I thought that was like part of the alien for some reason. <laughs> No, it's just a, a like a wire dangling from the from the metal thing. MTG gets you the babes, bro. <laughs> All the cool kids play MTG. And oh my god, the did you guys see the new most expensive Magic the Gathering card? was a Lord of the Rings card where they printed the one ring. I think it would have been cool. It would have been cool if they did only actually print the one ring once. But the thing is they printed the one ring like a regular card but they put like numbers on it. <laughs> so you, you get like a numbered ring. And then you got like the normal version, and you got you, you've got the normal ring, and it's like a regular card. Then you've got like the fancy art ring uh, that you can only get in certain packs, and you've got the fancy art that has the numbers on it. And there's multiple versions of that, so you got it. But the one that was most expensive was the one of one, one ring. <laughs> so the the Wait, no. Did they have multiple ones with different numbers? I don't remember now. But either way, like, they, they printed more than one one ring. The one that was super expensive was written in black speech, which is neat. Yeah, they've done that before for, like, other cards as well. Put them in, like, funny languages, like Phyrexian, the Phyrexian cards. They're so cool. And they actually go for a fair amount of money as well. Oh, and that's, like, an actual Magic the Gathering language. Anyway, oh. <laughs> So like, anyone could get the one ring, 
but there was like a special version of the one ring that was only printed once and I was like that's, I don't know that's, that's, it's, it's the same car it's the same car <laughs> you know I think it would have been like you know what no balls no balls was on the coast you should have only printed one one ring like a, a completely unique exclusive card not like a fancy version that's exclusive and unique no only print that card once <laughs> that rules that card with that rules shouldn't be one no balls <laughs> i feel like there would have been even more outrage than as well you know, outrage marketing, because people are going to be like, well, I really want to play with that card, but they only printed it once. Wah, wah. And you know what? I feel like that would have made it even better. <laughs> Let's make some drama. I think there was a deal. Whoever got this card went to some Iceland volcano to throw the card in it. <laughs> I just might be an internet man. I, that's definitely an internet man. No, the guy that got it, like, they... I'm, I'm sure they like tracked it or something like it's it's hilarious when we we're waiting for the one ring to be revealed like because there's recently things about magic cards uh like going missing and like someone found like a whole like palette of magic cards that was just dumped like in the in the waste <laughs> that was just in the trash an entire palette of magic boxes of cards um so people were speculating for ages, like, dude, that's so just gonna show up in the trash. <laughs> like, there's no way this one card finds out. The Pinkerton's incident? No, 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 this is a different incident. This is a different incident. Someone, like, they just threw away. But no, it was real. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. Oh. Okay, well, anyway, the guy found it. The guy cracked it. Um, and I'm pretty sure it ended up with Drake. Or something, I don't know, not Drake, probably not Drake, but like some some famous singer bought it. Maybe someone else also offered it. It was like some some pop star bought the one ring. Post Malone, that's it. Oh yeah, Post Malone. Yeah. yeah. So did was Post Malone the one that offered to Pay him a trip to New Zealand to throw it in the volcano. <laughs> or was it someone else? Dude, he, he totally should have done it. That would have been so perfect. It was someone else. Ah. Oh. But yeah, dude. I mean, two million dollars. The one of one ring. Yeah. It was. It's not even the one ring. Anyone can get the one ring, but the one of one ring. That's the one that's worth two million dollars. Um, it just seems, I don't know, it just seems so manufactured. <laughs> it, it's, I don't know, it just seems like such a marketing ploy by, by, uh, wizards, you know. And it's hilarious because they don't even have to spend the two million dollars. Some, some random rich collector is the one that's Paying two million dollars that puts it in the headlines. <laughs> By definition, manufactured. Yeah, it's not like the the Black Lotus. You know, the Black Lotus is cool because that was like unintentional. You know, like the Black Lotus was just was just like a really powerful card. They didn't realize it was so powerful because it was the first set they ever made, and it's still super powerful today. And it's just a really good card. <laughs> Um, that is also very rare because it only came out in, out in the original sets, um, and they can't reprint it. Like, that actually has, like, a, like, a story and, like, a reason behind it, I guess. It's supposed to be the One Ring. is just, like, there's no reason the One Ring, there only had to be one One Ring, I guess, you know? <laughs> there's, yeah, just literally manufactured scarcity. <laughs> That's it. And then at the volcano you say, why shouldn't I keep it? Is that a reference? I don't know, I haven't actually, I haven't actually seen Lord of the Rings. <laughs> this, is a, this, is a, this is a fact on the, of the channel, I've not seen Lord of the Rings. Anyways. 
Wow, I finished oranging all these guys. We went on a rant about Magic the Gathering. Uh, I'm dying. I'm dying. <laughs> Little Wings watch party when? Uh, we should do it. We should do it. That'd be keen. <laughs> ah! Um. So we got to. I got to paint one of them at least. And I think I'll. I think I'll, I'll stick with this color scheme. It's not particularly fancy or anything. I think I kind of ruined it with the yellow. I think I'll do a, another black dry brush over it later. Um, that will probably make it look better. <laughs> um, I'm glad I got to do one at least. We got to do a test mini. We got a test mini completed, and that was that was the minimum minimum base goal for for this stream. So, and I got all the other ones orange as well, which is good. Bonus! Bonus objective complete. <laughs> ninja turtle for Mars? What? How's it a ninja turtle? You can join the local GW crusade? Ooh, fun! That's cool. Yeah. Is it like 10th edition? I don't think 10th, does 10th edition have much... Does 10th edition have much crusade rules? Yeah! We're actually running uh, a crusade with our club at the moment as well, and we got like custom rules and everything that Classy's been writing. Yeah. You don't know why it just reminded you of a Ninja Turtle? You can't explain it. <laughs> oh, AOS! Right, 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 right. Okay, cool. <laughs> I guess it kind of looks like he's get getting out of like a like a sewer. Uh, had like manhole. That's it. Manhole cover. Kind of looks like a manhole cover, I guess. It's not very turtley though. He's got a little bit of ninja, he's got a little bit of sewer. Not very much turtle. Sewer ninja. <laughs> the sewer ninjas. Not very teenage either. The story is trying to establish a Sigma city. Ooh. Gonna start a Slaves of Darkness army. Hell yeah! Slaves of Darkness is so cool. Man, I love so many of the Sigma armies. I want them all. I want them all. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's it. I've we've done. We've done the duns. Um, I'm happy. Um, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with the. I'm happy with the progress we got this stream. And if you want to vote on the next stream, uh, you can become a member for one dollar do. That's all it takes. Or a dollar. Sorry, a dollar. A, a dollar fifth to redo. <laughs> One dollar fifty redo. Australian money. Um, you can vote on the next stream. Or if you would like to see my new video coming out next week, um, pay five dollar dues. Five dollar dues. You'll get to see my video next week. Hopefully, if I finish it by then. Um, <laughs> if not, everyone else will get to see it a week after. Yay! You'd like to join for AOS, but I think uh, keeping a worm of 40k at AOS army is too much. That's very fair. That's very fair. I think it's good to have like one of each though. Or you can just get Chaos Demons and then you can play them in both. Double deal. Double dip. <laughs> They're very good. They're actually really good in Sigma as well. Anyway. Yay! Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next week. I'll see you on Twitch. You guys should come, you should come, you guys should come watch Twitch Team. We do fun things on there as well. Um, if you're not in the Discord, you should join the Discord. Um, you can follow me on, on Twitter and Instagram. Um, on Instagram, I, I post my commissions and stuff as well. So I've got I've got like my good painting on Instagram. <laughs> Instagram is all my good work. <laughs> not this cringe stream painting. No. Um, and all the links, all the links are in the description. So I don't know, just like scroll down. Click on all the links. All of the blue highlighted text, just click on all of it. Um, who knows where it will take you? It's a little bit of, it's a little adventure! <laughs> yeah! Might go to Twitter, might go to Instagram. Might even take you to my merch, my merch website! Where can you get the Pega Paint Water Mug? The official Pega Paint Water Mug. The best, the best merch. Alright, anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head down. Yippee! Um, you're my time. 